Hello, and welcome. It is a pleasure to see you here. Today, we're going to talk about focus. Now, focus is a big thing. It's a very big thing. It can mean a lot of things, but we're going to talk about focus when it comes to art, how to retain focus. Again, not much of a smaller topic because, again, there's <laughs> there's a lot of ways to retain focus in art as well. But the main thing that I really want to focus on today, the thing that really inspires me and has been a thing that I've aspired to be capable of doing is lost edges and retaining focus through them. So what are lost edges? Well, put in my own words, trying my best at least, it is to have an object and then another object that is overlapping, whether through behind or next to, or well, there should be a little depth. And due to the colors or the contrast being close enough, these objects are capable of mixing into one awkward transition. Right? Not awkward, not awkward, sorry, not awkward. They, they transition, they, they're, they're soft the edge of where this object stops and this one begins are obscured. They're, they're one, they're one thing. And I really, really enjoy, at least, well, I do enjoy looking at it and I enjoy to create it. I just haven't gotten to the point where I'm capable of creating it like mwah, perfectly yet. But I really like the storytelling that you can do through this type of coloring or painting rather and the reason is because so much emotion can be put into this way of losing an edge because it really hones where your your focus is where you're looking but also it can tell such powerful emotions of fatigue of exhaustion of depression of sadness right because uh, having personally gone through a lot of fatigue, there is a moment where your vision can start to fail you, in a sense, where it's very difficult to focus. So looking at my own hand, it is not even perfectly in focus, but this tiny area around the three middle fingers is in focus, while everything else kind of just blends into this blur, like taking off my glasses everything becomes blurry, obscured. And that's something that's so beautiful uh, of an emotion or feeling to be able to convey through these lost edges. Another aspect of it is just straight up realism. Because when you look at something, when I look at one point in my roof, I see that one point, but everything around without me shifting my eyes to look at it directly, is not crisp it's not detail rich it is this muddied out obscured shape that just blends into each other like i can't see there's a couch here for example i can't see when the couch cushion ends and when the couch back begins that's not something that i can see but i can kind of see this line that goes and blends into both objects that indicates like here is a shadow area that's being cast from the lights that's hitting here. But I can't see it perfectly. That was a lot to talk about just that. <laughs> but uh, it's good. It's a good talk. I like it. Now, one thing that I figured out really quick when I started trying to make this, we're gonna go over some of my drawings over the past two, three weeks now. Soon, after I'm finished rambling. Uh, I ramble a lot. That's, that's just something that we're both gonna have to get used to. But something that I figured out really quickly when it comes to lost edges is that you need to have good contrast control you need to know where your contrasts are, where your lost edges are going to be, and you need to adjust the contrast to the point where you can start blending those together. Because blending a white into a black, it's not so easy, and it can look quite awkward. So, contrast. 
Have you heard about it before? I have. And I've struggled with it for a long, long time. And something else that I kind of realized over these past weeks is how important contrast is and how beautiful contrast is as well from a fundamental point. Because contrast is one of the more fundamental things when it comes to art. And if you ask me from a subjective standpoint, I would even go as far as to say that contrast might be the most important art fundamental when it comes to visual art. So visual as in painting, drawing, um, <laughs> video, cinema, films, you know, everything that you're looking at. The concept of contrast might be the most important one. Now, why is that? Well, contrast is, for better or worse, light. It is light. Without light, everything would be dark. It would be complete blackness. You wouldn't be able to see color. You wouldn't be able to see the shape where one edge ends and one another begins. While light is, you know, brightness or, you know, black and white. And that is something that is so important when it comes to humans. Now, visual art is obviously, you know, our eyes. It's what we see. And light is what we see. That is, by definition, how we humans, you and I, observe the world. We, well... Some people are blind and they use their ear, their feelings when it comes to touch and smell and that to observe the world. And that's something that's very different. It's a very fascinating thought because you and I, uh, presuming that you are one who can see, will never be able to experience the world in that sense. Sure, we can put on a blindfold and walk around for a week and feel the world but the problem is that at the end of the day we will always have the knowledge that it's just for us to untie that blindfold and then the world is back to how it used to be to live in a world in such a different state is not something that can be just put on and taken off again it's something that has to be your entire being you have to truly believe that you will never see to be blind that was a tangent, excuse that. Um, but for those of us who observe the world through sight, light is the only reason we can see because that's how our eyes function. It takes the light in and converts it into images. That's also how color work. Without light, color would not exist at all because light is what carries the color. It hits an object, the object absorbs some colors, it absorbs the colors that it is not, and then the remaining color bounces off that object and hits your eye, and that's how you see that color. Now, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll indulge a little bit, but the, the thing that's super fascinating about this is that if something is the opposite color of something else, so say we have, I did a little experiment. I did a little experiment. It didn't work out super well because I think the colors are a little off, the lighting conditions are not ideal and everything like that. But if you have something that is magenta, that's more towards red, and something that is cyan, and the light hits the magenta object, the magenta would then absorb the cyan or the object writer would abs absorb the cyan and the yellow and the magenta would bounce off which would give us looking at that object the magenta color but if that magenta color then bounces off of something and hits another object that is cyan because that object absorbed the cyan and yellow color that object where the bounce light hits would turn gray 
because all of the color has been taken out. So when that color then bounces off that again, it doesn't have the cyan that it needs to bounce into our eyes to tell us that that's cyan. That's fascinating. Oh yeah, and also, the reason it turns to grey and not more red is because the cyan object would then absorb the magenta, so the bounced magenta color gets absorbed and bounces off again and loses all color. That is so amazing and cool. Color. <sighs> That's the planet we live on. Quite that tough and beautiful place, if you ask me. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Light is so fundamentally important to us to observe the world. So when it comes to portraying life through be it fiction, be it characterization, be it realism, light and contrast is something that is so fundamentally important to do it in a proper way way and of course not everything is going to be high and low contrast or high contrast as in having a huge range of pure white to pure black some are going to be more towards here some is going to be more up here where you have more of a bright contrast but you still need to have some contrast without it your paintings will look muddy now, before we move on, I want to talk a little bit more. I know, I know it's a lot, but I really like talking about it. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Something that is so beautiful about light and about us as human beings as well, is that without light, obviously, we wouldn't see. We would not have vision we would not be capable of observing the world the way we who use sight observe the world but at the same time the opposite is also true without us without matter in the universe light wouldn't exist Without us, light would just be energy floating through space with nothing. Sure, it would hold the capacity to create color. Sure, it would hold the capacity to create contrast. But without matter, without us, it wouldn't exist. If you take your hand and look at it, all of the light that's reflecting, all of the detail, the little stripes, the pores, the skinful, the wrinkles, everything that you see here is the light hitting your matter, hitting you and creating beautiful color, beautiful contrast, beautiful detail that would take hours upon hours to sit down and draw and render in its full detail. And there's something so magical about thinking if I did not exist, the light that's hitting my hand and creating the colors, the shapes, the shading, the detail, everything, in a sense, wouldn't either. Sure, it would be the couch over there, but this right here, it wouldn't exist. And that's such a powerful thought. It's a Alan Watts quote that I tried to search up earlier now, but I couldn't find. And it states that something around this where without us, without matter, light is not observed. Without matter, it's just energy floating aimlessly around in space. But as soon as as we exist, as soon as something exists of matter, so does light. Anyways, let's look at some drawings. So, as I was talking about, I really wanted to capture lost edges. 
gonna twirl my mustache and make my girlfriend lose her fucking mind. And I started off with just some simple sketches, simple drawings. So we started off with this, it's just a cube, a circle, or a sphere, and a cone. And something that you might be able to notice immediately is that it's very low contrast. And it was not done so deliberately. This is just is me trying to make something that would look realistic and good in a sense. Um, something I noticed very quickly was that the contrast was slow, but I was happy with it. I did enjoy looking at it, it made me happy. I think I tried to make the sphere a little more higher contrast to make that the center figure, the main focus of this. Uh, the, the the main character of Sans. No, note that main characters does not have to be persons or animals. It can be things, it can be objects. Things, that's the same word for the same thing, by the way. It can be a feeling, it can be an object. But it's our job as artists to portray what is the main character and to show it off in the correct way. Correct way can mean a lot of things. It can be correct for you and it can mean correct in a more objective sense. Objectivity is weird, but maybe that's a talk for another day. So yeah, I liked a lot about this. I really enjoyed the bloom effect that I managed to pull off with the brushwork. That was something that made me really happy about moving on. So the next one I did was about this potted plant. And looking at it now, it... Again, there is stuff that I enjoy about it. I feel that the contrast is still too low but the edge work kind of works a lot because here I had more of a focus on some of the more harder edges compared to some of the more softer edges on the side where the plant is supposed to be obscured and blend more into the background. Um, but with the mind of contrast being low, I moved on to this one. And in this one, I really emphasized I need harder darks and harder brights and i feel this was the first time i properly understood just how important it is to have that good contrast to make things really pop and stand out the darkness against the brightness makes the shape of everything stand out way better um, and the focus of having more harder edges on the left where the light is hitting it and more darker edges on the right where the shadow is enveloping it really makes it way more alive because there it wouldn't really logically be a super soft blended disappeared edge where the bright light is hitting it directly on the dark background. If the background was more of a bright color there, then it would make a lot more sense to have it disappear, of course, but on a hard one, uh, or, or on a dark one, excuse me, it would, of course, be more standing out. But again, I tried to make the circle, excuse me, the sphere, the main character of the piece. So I gave it an extra highlight and made it sh made sure that it had or I tried to make sure that it had the hardest contrast out of all of them when it comes to both edges and of uh, values. Now, of course, contrast, I don't think I mentioned this, but contrast, put simply, just means difference. So the opposite opposition of black and white is the difference that creates a good contrast. The contrast of a soft edge and a hard edge is the difference that makes good contrast. Uh, so I tried to make sure that the cylinder in the back and the cube on the left had more softer edges, but it's still, you know, it's still kind of, it, it, it could need some more work, but it's a good start. Then I moved on to day four. And I forgot to draw because I was really tired. And again, the point isn't necessarily to make a masterwork, it's not to make a super in-depth study. So here I just doodled on my phone, I just drew some cubes, cylinders, and uh, a uh, circle. Just to, again, keep in mind contrast, see how it would... And here I was kind of limited to having only two colors being 
the black and the white space around. So focused on seeing if I could lose the edges in uh, in that sense. And yeah, no, it worked pretty well. It could have been done better, but you know, it is what it is. Then I had another day where I drew on my phone. This time I tried to work a little bit more with different strokes when it came to um, how dense the light was going to be and also where the light was hitting and the shape of the form. So I tried to, instead of, I have a tendency to cross hatch and try to do it in the same direction every single time and it looks very monotone in a sense. But here I tried to change up the direction, try to make it a little bit more interesting. It feels more alive to me. It's not necessarily perfect, far from it, but it's something. Then I had a run-in with a spider and I tried to do a test again where I did, this is more of a proper painting where I wanted to make a good contrast and lose a lot of edges, have this creature that's kind of crawling out of the darkness. I had a real life run-in with a spider, it was horrifying by the way. Uh, it was massive, it was like a basement spider, and those things are huge. I didn't know I was arachnophobic until I saw that thing. I've seen spiders before, I've had spiders in my apartment before, but that thing made me jump in the couch and stand there and just scream at it, just leave. I got the vacuum and killed it, I'm sorry, it had to be done. Uh, this piece I'm quite happy with, I think it would have benefited from a couple more days of refinement, a little bit more planning, it was very much just a spontaneous I'm gonna draw something and I have this thing on my mind right now. Uh, so some more rendering, I think a little bit more brightness in the face would have benefited a lot. But uh, the body just kind of being obscured in the background, you can kind of see some vague details. It worked out pretty well. Then we move on to this fridge drawing. I'm quite happy with this one still looking at it. Uh, for a uh, just quick sketch, or not sketch, but a quick drawing. Uh, just to see if I can manage to get that contrast that I want. Um, and it works out pretty well. The fridge disappears nicely in the back, you have some nice bounce light from where the light hits the ground. I don't think it realistically would bounce so much back onto the refrigerator. I think light needs... Light doesn't necessarily bounce backwards again, so I think that's a little... unrealistic, but... Um... I think it looks cool, so you know what, sometimes you, you can bend the rules, just be aware of it, you know. Then I did this skull, again I'm quite happy with it, I think uh, a lot of it looks pretty nice. I managed to get the contrast I wanted, I feel like it, it feels nice and alive, it doesn't feel like a two-dimensional drawing, I feel like the 3D shapes are there. I say feel a lot now, but it, you know, that's art, like, you gotta feel, you gotta put your feelings into it. Uh, but looking at it, I am quite happy with how it turned out. And then, I had a realization. I was drawing a lot of things in darkness. So I wanted to flip the script, where I wanted to have a lot more lost edges in brightness. And I did this, it was very quick, very rough, very quick. Uh, not so happy with it, it's, you know, you can't have winners all day. Some days you just gotta draw a little bit and then just call it a day. But uh, it was also kind of an awakener where I realized you know what, I'm comfortable with drawing things in the dark, I'm not so comfortable with drawing things in the light. So the next day we went back to the basics and we got ourselves a sphere. And we just drew a sphere in a bright environment and we made the edges on the bright side obscure this time. And it turned out pretty well. I think the contrast could have been a little better. I think the darkest darks could have been a little bit darker because it's very, very bright in the bright areas. And a little adjustment to just the little dark line you see there, a little bit of shadow, and especially to the ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion being where um, 
an area is so tight that light just bounces. I don't get it really. I need, I, I really need to search up more ambient occlusion, but it's something about the tight area. Like if you close your palm together and just look inside of it, it's almost completely black. Like you can't see anything in there. And it has something to do with the area being so tight that the light just bounces, like bounces really quickly back and forth and just loses all its power immediately. So um, something to look up for sure. And then the next one, we tried to do another bigger picture drawing. We have an upside down pyramid. Very cool. Very mystical. I love mystical. Myst mysticality and, and uh, melancholy are my two favorite things in the world. Absolutely love it. And uh, this time I feel a little bit more satisfied with the work. I feel like I managed to obscure it a little bit better. But again, looking at it, the contrast just is not there. The darkest darks are not dark enough. And I think personally, I struggle a lot with making things darker in a lighter environment. Um, but that's, you know, that's life for you. Things are going to be dark, even in a brightly lit area. If you look under, underneath your table, for example, if you have an odd ob object that's laying in there, it's going to be quite dark, especially in not a perfectly lit room with outdoor windows blasting light everywhere, you know? There, um, there's going to be darkness in your real life as well. Even if you have a really light, uh, brightly lit scene. Then we did some fan art for a YouTuber, Radical Soda. Check him out. Pretty funny guy. Pretty funny guy. He made a Pokemon series uh, where he just made his own generation. I really liked it. It was fun. A fun watch. Anyways, then this, I will say, is the first time I feel I properly managed to convey a realistic feeling picture with lost edges during a bright scene. And the main thing that I did differently was to use a reference. To look up a picture and actively look at it, see how the light looks in that picture. And I know, you're probably like me. And you're like, no, I'm not supposed to use references. I'm actually a very skilled and talented artist and using references is is beneath me. I don't use them. I don't need to. And uh, yeah, no, uh, that ego can be in all of us where we feel like, oh no, I've, I've drawn for many years. I don't need references. Or especially if you've kind of grown up as like a self-taught artist and you're seeing the online sphere and seeing People just say like, no, 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 references are for the amateurs. I am not an amateur. I don't use references. <laughs> use references. It's really gonna level up your skills because looking at the real world, looking how things actually look is the thing that makes your art feel believable. Even though it might feel like you're failing or like, oh, my brute's little ego, it's, oh, it's shattered. It doesn't matter. Your ego does not reflect how good your art is. You can have a massive ego and your art can be complete. <laughs> or you can have a tiny ego and your art can be completely amazing. Let go of your ego. The art speaks for itself. References are a fantastic tool to be used. Don't trace them though. <laughs> because you want to understand why you're doing the, decis the, the decisions you're doing and tracing it will just copy what you're looking at. Um, we can talk about this more another time. But uh, yeah, no, I would again, heavily recommend use your references but don't trace them look at them observe them figure out why what works about them and what doesn't work about them look at your art look at the reference compare them look at them and say okay i can see kind of what i got wrong fantastic learning material 
And uh, the reason why I'm showing you some things here that I'm not really proud of, of as well is because I think it's generally important to fail and just have things that you're not happy with. Uh, we're going to do a little rapid fire now. I'm seeing, oh, half an hour. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Uh, did a sketch. This was when I started planning out my painting more. Then I focused it and I turned it more into like a medieval thing. Really enjoy that setting. Made it more, much more opportunity for dark, dark obscured, scary medieval stuff. And I wanted to come into this conclusion where you see this. Uh, it was supposed to be a cat and then it turned into a dog that's in, in the. In like a jail room, it's like jailed, you know. Uh, then I did a little sketch test for how I kind of wanted the color. Um, then my lap uh, computer failed for a second, and I did another drawing where I stacked uh, some 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 shapes. I made myself suffer a little bit, you know. Have a little fun with it. Have a little fun with it. Don't 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 slave away for everything. And then we did a proper test. And I see and like, yes, this is what I want to paint. I'm happy with it. And then I moved on into the next phase where I sketched it more. Uh, and then the sketch turned into this. And I has to, we actually, we, we have a speed paint that I actually think I might have played instead of going over the transformation here. Now, let's look at the, excuse me, main photo here. Uh, where have you gone? There we go. There we go. We managed to get the cat features back. I'm very pleased with this uh, painting or photo, whatever you want to call it. I feel like I managed to capture contrast really well. You have there's a it's a very dark piece for sure, but I wanted it to be a very dark piece. I wanted to have this creature fantasy creature obscured in the darkness in this dungeon. Uh, there's something it's it's very focused this piece is very focused on contrast right you have this cute creature in this dark scary jail torture awful environment like that's a contrast from a narrative standpoint and then there's the contrast of the bright lantern and then the dark obscured hall or wall behind this creature um and then uh there's like bounce lot happening all over the place and you have this hard structure around and you have this soft cuddly creature there's a lot of contrast in this piece um looking at it now there are things that i would have changed one thing is i would have spent more time doing more research on the architectural style because I feel like the floor panels are kind of just cubes that are placed, you know? I did some research looking for the pillar, and I feel like the, pil the pillar is kind of cool. It's very obscure, of course, because the main focus is supposed to be the cat. Um, speaking about focus, though, the lantern steals the show a lot. It's very bright. It's the first thing you look at. And that can be good and it can be bad because i did kind of i'm i'm actually a little conflicted myself if i want the cat to be the main character or if it's the secondary character because i, I kind of want you to come into the picture and then see the cat second in a sense and that's why the lantern is so bright so you look at the lantern then you look at the cat but i think it could have been done better i think compositionally I didn't spend enough time thinking about how I want to guide your eye in, as a viewer. You kind of come in through the top left, you see the arm, then you see the lantern, or you just immediately land the lantern. Uh, the change do then kind of guide you towards it, and then also the light that's hitting the ground is the secondary source, and you look there, and then you're guided into the can. So from a composition standpoint, it's not awful, but it could be better. 
overall, I'm really happy with this piece. I feel like it's not the best I can do. I think I've done better, but it, it's definitely quite high up there on uh, where I am in my artistic abilities currently. I have learned a lot throughout this project. Uh, mainly though, it's been about the importance of contrast from a artistic standpoint, but also from a human standpoint. Just sitting down and thinking about what light actually means, what light actually means to me, right? Just understanding why I see, how I see, what light actually is in my day-to-day -day life and understanding that when I draw, light needs to be important. That's something that's, to ha that's something that's really good to have in the back of your head when you're drawing. And uh, I really like the thought about it. I really do. I hope you do too. I hope you enjoyed this little video of mine. Now though, we've been here for almost 40 minutes. I think it might be time for us to part once more. And uh, we'll, we'll see each other again in a couple weeks. How about that? Hmm? Next time, let's see. Next time, I think I'm going to focus a lot on shapes. If I don't do a tangent video, I might do something a little bit different next week. Or not next week, next time. We'll see. But something that I did notice uh, is that when I draw, I don't think enough about shapes. Shapes is something that is extremely important when it comes to drawing, you know? Because I say you know, and then I don't expand on the thought. Sorry. Light and shadow. Whoa. Sorry, chair. Light and shadow is something that you can't just blend it because that's not how it works. It, 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 there are hard edges. There are soft edges, of course, and there's lost edges, but... When you when you mix your shadows into your lights, it's um, it's complicated. But you need to have shapes in the back of your mind constantly, and I don't think I do. And that's why some of my paintings tend to get quite muddy, and they get very weird because I don't really think about okay, well I need to have a hard edge here to make the shape language of the light and the shadow not mesh into one weird thing anyways that will be a topic for another time contrast contrast and lost edges it's been a long talk and i hope i hope you enjoy it i hope you enjoyed seeing my process and i hope you enjoyed seeing my learning process through it and maybe you've even learned something yourself <sighs> It's a strange place we live in, isn't it? But it's quite beautiful. So keep that in mind next time you go outside. Just look at it. Enjoy it. Think about what you're actually looking at. You're looking at light. You're looking at bounced light. It's crazy. So until next time, enjoy everything. Everything you see. Enjoy the contrast. Enjoy the beauty of just what shadow is. Enjoy bounce light. Enjoy everything that you're looking at, the colors, and just think to yourself, this is all because of light. This is all because of contrast. And it's beautiful. Anyways, this has been me. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.